On this episode, we summarize the situation in the Asia-Pacific region with the announcement of a ban in Vietnam, an update on the Philippines' FDA, and the opening of the consultation on the New Zealand regulatory framework. We start with Vietnam, where the government has proposed a ban on e-cigarettes and heated tobacco products, likely at the request of the government-owned tobacco company. Vietnam will ban the sale, purchase, manufacture, and importation of e-cigarettes and heated tobacco products according to a story in the state newspaper of Dong Nai Province. Because they're classified as tobacco products, public use and advertising of e-cigarettes are already prohibited in Vietnam. But the country currently has no specific laws addressing vaping product sales, except for a restriction on imports by any company other than the state-owned Vietnam Tobacco Corporation. The country's Ministry of Health claims studies have proven that electronic cigarettes and heated tobacco are as harmful as traditional cigarettes. In a November 2019 meeting, to review the country's tobacco control law, a government health official said that e-cigarettes may cause serious brain damage, and a doctor claimed that vaping is no less harmful than smoking. Because the planned law prohibits purchase as well as sale, it will essentially criminalize all Vietnamese vapors. In the Philippines, the investigation into the FDA has attracted the attention of overseas experts who believe that international law may have been broken. In the Philippines, a Yoko Sur representative, Dia Gracia Savellano, said it is incumbent for Congress to investigate FDA's receipt of private funds from known anti-tobacco, anti-ENDS, and anti-HTP organizations, and how these could have shaped the agency's adopted policies. According to Representative Savellano, until the House investigation is concluded, the FDA should not proceed with regulations. We will perform our duty and see to it that the government agencies and officials are made accountable if found to have given their foreign granters undue and unwarranted advantage over our national policies. I want to make it very clear that our government policy on public health is not for sale. Advocates in the Philippines are working with officials there and overseas experts on the legality of what has transpired. It is very possible that the Bloomberg Foundation broke U.S. law with its donation to the Philippine FDA. What affects one of us affects all of us, and it is heartening to see the cooperation between government officials, public health experts, and consumer advocates towards the quest for honest government and honest public health policy in the Philippines. When the New Zealand government opened up the public consultation on the vaping regulatory framework, the community was hoping to see something that was risk proportionate, pragmatic, and progressive as was promised. However, this was not the case. The proposals have the possibility of decimating the independent industry. The proposed regulatory framework outlines severe restrictions on messages and advice about vaping to the public. One proposal is that any information given to the public about vaping and tobacco harm reduction can only be government-approved messages by a suitably qualified health worker. Simply put, a de facto ban on consumer advocacy and peer support groups working in the community to help smokers quit. One of the most damning proposals is a $140 per item yearly fee to the government that means each coil, each bottle of juice, every item sold in store. For example, a vape shop that has 5,000 items will need to pay $700,000 just to notify and get approval for inventory alone annually. Also proposed is a ban on sweeteners and e-liquid, effectively wiping out most imported juice brands. All of the foregoing has the potential to drastically limit access and the choices available to consumers and may decimate the independent industry in New Zealand. The new regulations are going to impact my business and many other businesses within our industry at a huge cost. With the price of regulations, it's, it's going to be um, extremely hard to stay in business. We won't be able to continue producing e-juice at all. 
there is absolutely no way that we can afford those those prices. A 100ml bottle of juice costs around about $40 for an import. Bring in the cost of regulations coming through, that's going to push that bottle of juice up to between $50 to $60. Your small, say, $20 bottles of juice probably end up costing just as much, if not more, than a packet of cigarettes. They're, they're taking everything that's proven to work for vapours and they're taking it away from them. These regulations have a lot of potential to even shut down our industry by making it virtually impossible to have products meet regulations. The likeliness of our business closing is huge. If, if the goal is to try and get people to quit smoking, making the better, safer, cheaper alternative more expensive than smoking, it's just uh, no one's going to want to switch over and it's just going to be detrimental to everything that they're trying to accomplish. We pay, we pay, we pay. This is the time for any and all people who are interested and passionate about the adult right to make informed choices to make a submission. Please visit the Ministry of Health website at www.health.govt.nz and click on the red vaping regulations area of the page. Now we go to a summary of issues around the globe. Hello. Hi, I'm Florence from the World Health Organization. I want to talk to you about the harms of using tobacco, including smoking and how to quit. Why should I quit smoking? Will the World Health Organization's campaign Commit to Quit help one million people quit tobacco globally? Well, I want to quit, but I've tried before and it's just really hard. I'm here to help. I can teach you proven techniques to help you quit, tell you why quitting is a good idea, and more. Perhaps. If the WHO were to embrace new methods and emerging scientific data to change their minds on safer nicotine products. The recent report from the WHO study group on tobacco product regulation calls for the outright ban of open tank vaping systems and heated tobacco products, and if that is not possible, severe restrictions on access to these products. The campaign is focused on a number of countries in Asia Pacific, such as Vietnam, Pakistan, Indonesia, and India. Interestingly, the focus countries are also the countries with government-controlled tobacco companies and interests. Well, how do I quit? Congratulations. Being motivated to quit is the first step. It is ironic how the WHO think that a bot on a phone app will save 100 million lives globally, and yet they call for bans on products that have already helped millions of smokers to quit. In Europe, the Netherlands announced a plan to ban flavors just before the Christmas holidays. It came with the news that a shortened public consultation would take place, starting and concluding over the holiday period. This has been perceived as a deliberate attempt to silence the voice of vapors. The timing, however, did not stop people from responding to the consultation. The Netherlands saw the largest number of responses ever collected on a public consultation on health matters. From the 757 submissions recorded on the official website, 746 of them were opposed to the ban, with nine void entries and just two submissions supporting the government's proposal. The Netherlands are a prime example of the power of advocacy and people getting their voices heard by getting involved to protect the rights of adults to make informed choices. Lastly, the next Voices for Vape webinar is coming on the 21st of March, 2021. Registration and more information will be available from the 1st of March. This webinar is titled, The Attack on Our Right to Make Informed Choices. Join us and be a part of the change that we need to see happen. 2021 looks to be a very interesting year. We all need to work together towards pragmatic policies that are based on science and evidence. We need to have our voices heard. Until we meet again, stay safe and be well. <laughs>